Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. Hope you're doing great. Got a great story out of Zero Hedge. It's about Peter Schiff. I can't wait. I'm trying to get Peter Schiff to come out to the Silver Symposium. Let's see if we can get a hold of him, get him out there. If you guys haven't gotten your tickets, I'm gonna put a link below to the uh, tickets. There's about 200 left. Once they're gone, they're gone. Unless, of course, we can find a beggar venue. But as of right now, it's at Caesars Palace in Vegas, so you guys can get there. I'll put that below and a link to the 10-ounce silver coin giveaway that we're going to be drawing the uh, winner for this Friday. All right, Peter Schiff says, the Fed is losing the inflation fight. And that is so true. It says, we saw a big sell-off in the gold market last week, and the price dropped below $2,000 an ounce. Let me stop there real quick. I do expect a larger sell-off in both markets, paper, gold, and silver, because as things churn, the, the stock market starts to turn just like it did in 2008, and it starts to trend lower, gold and silver will as well. The paper price, I can't tell you what's going to happen with physical gold. It says, the paper price goes down, people dive in, it causes premiums to explode, right? And then you're almost sort of sitting there at the same value, okay? That exact same thing happened in 2008 as well. And then they found a bottom and took off. That is what I am expecting. And so just so you guys know, be aware of that because as markets and equities turn and things get bad, uh, investment funds, hedge funds, retail investors sell their paper insurance, which is paper, gold, and silver, which I would never invest in ever, to go and cover their, their shorts or their losses, all right? So just know that, all right? So it says the catalyst for that sell-off was tough talk from several Federal Reserve officials and an increasing expectation that the central bank will raise rates again in June. Okay, now that is another catalyst for paper, gold, and silver selling off because as the dollar gets stronger in value, as they keep, and uh, that's a really loose term, but when they keep raising rates, it gives the dollar more perceived value because you get more yield on your investment, right? So people are more, or uh, investors are more tending to hold dollars than gold or silver because it brings them a yield, all right? But then after a while, you're going, at what cost, all right? This exact same thing happens every time the Fed raises rates. However, this time is a little different because as rates are going up, gold and silver have been trending up because investors are going, you know what? This bubble's gonna pop and it's gonna pop magnificently, so they've been buying, okay? So this that part in and of itself is different than what happened in 2007, 2008. Um, as gold was going up slightly, but rates were going up at a faster pace back in like 2004, 2006 era. Um, that is a little different now. So, so it's hard to judge which way we're going right now. It says, as Peter Schiff explained in his podcast, everyone thinks the Fed is going to win the inflation fight because it's going to be even tougher. In reality, they're talking tougher because they are losing the fight. On Thursday, Dallas Fed President Lori Logan said she's concerned that much too high inflation is not cooling fast enough to allow the Fed to pause its interest rate hike campaign in June. And she says the data in coming weeks could yet show that is it is appropriate to skip a meeting. As of today, though, we aren't there yet, meaning that she's not seeing any news information in the news that would tell her that it is not appropriate to not raise rates, that they are going to continue to raise rates. And I completely agree with that. Everyone thinks they're going to pause, right? Because they want that monetary heroin just shoved right into their arm. They want those low rates. The pausing will at least start something, and then lowering on the backside would give the juice the markets even more. But the Fed is nowhere near fighting inflation. Why? Because those rates need to be near to, at, or a little above the actual rate of inflation. Okay, now we're already seeing deflation. We're already seeing how prices coming down. We're already seeing vehicle prices start to wane. Things are happening there. Um, you know, nobody's buying TVs and electronics in stores right now. So we're seeing deflation there. They're offering more sales. They've got to get rid of this inventory. Even tools at Home Depot, things like that. All of the companies are telling you the exact same thing, that they are, the consumer is no longer buying discretionary items. Problem is you have food and energy and uh, still a little bit of rents. Rents are starting to wane a little bit because they're so darn high. But that food and energy are two of the most important factors. That's why they're not always put into all these different inflation metrics with the government because it's those pesky food and inflation numbers. They always get the best of us. Those are the two ones that people need. They gotta have food and energy, right? And so that's the thing. The inflation rate on those are much higher than the Fed's rate, right? Five and a quarter, five and a half percent, who gives a whoop? Do you think, put it in the comments, are food and inflation, are food and uh, energy only going up 5%, five and a half percent? No. So that means the Fed's got to get their rates much, much higher. And you know what that means? Collapse of all kinds of things, especially manufacturing, um, different corporate debt bonds, things like that. It's going to be a bloodbath, all right? 
Now it says, while the stock market shrugged off tougher Fed talk, the dollar strengthened. Gold fell and the short end of the bond market also sold off. If the FOMC does raise rates this month, this next month, it will push the Fed funds rate between five and quarter and five and a half percent. As Peter pointed out, this would drive rates above the peak of the last cycle back in June of 2006. Again, be very cautious, like understand all these numbers. Hey, we haven't seen inflation in 40 years like this high. We haven't seen these rates as high since 2006. And you start to look at everything that happened back then, wherever it said, oh, 2006, oh, that's when everything tanked. Okay, the market couldn't take it. But what's even more impressive is if we're going back to 2006 numbers with the Fed funds rate, Look at how much more asset prices are. Look at the average pickup truck cost right now. The average, you know, median family, the median size home, the, the three bedroom, two bath home in America. It is worth so much more. Yet wages have not gone up that much. Credit card debt, so much more. That means this bubble is going to be so much bigger and a, a better to pop and even more opportunities for you to make money. Okay. And that's what I want you to do is make money. Now it says, hey, here, and this is, uh, this is Peter talking, we will be above the interest rate level that precipitated the 2008 financial crisis and Great Recession. Except the difference is today that we have so much more debt than we did back then. Hey, Peter, we got something in common. I haven't even read this yet, just so you know. Um, everybody has a lot more debt, the government, corporations, and individuals. So the level of interest will do far more damage today than it did in 2007. And we know how much damage it did then because we had the financial crisis of 2008. So the financial crisis that has already begun in 2023 is going to be much worse than the one we had in 2008. Americans are using their credit cards as a lifeline. That's how they're dealing with higher prices. They're charging stuff. And that is absolutely true. Credit card debt, if you look at a chart of American credit card debt and you look back in 2006 to 2008, it went up and it went up pretty well. If you look at it now, I mean, it was like this and then it came down after 2008, right? Because people lost their jobs. They had their credit card, credit lines slashed. Um, it went down and it sort of came up. Now it is up here and this is no joke. And it's crazy because all the banks are just keep throwing out those credit cards, throwing out those credit card uh, deals because they have a feeling that the Fed's gonna backstop them. Why? Because this government, see, it's not just the Fed backstopping them, the Fed backstops in the beginning. But then the Fed goes, all right, our balance sheet's too heavy. Now the US government, we wanna offload all of this off to you as a crisis. And if you don't do this and you don't use taxpayer dollar to bail out all these banks, there's gonna be blood in the streets. They literally threatened, was it Hank Paulson? Threatened that back in, um, uh, to Congress back in 2008. And they bit, they fell for it hook, line, and sinker. But it didn't matter because they're all bought and paid for anyway. So you got to understand the game. And this is where they know that the current president, the current White House will backstop them. Why? Because they like money. And that's what's really sad. The last president more than likely wouldn't have done that because of the business side going, no, 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 wait a minute. We're going to unburden the taxpayers with all you private banks did. He had a clue of what was going on. This president, he has got a clue, right? But it's, well, how much am I getting paid? I'm not joking. I think that's where we are. And I think it's absolutely disgusting that politicians are bought and paid for. And you know what would uh, take care of that right now? Term limits. We need to start working on that. And the sad thing is they got to vote for it themselves. So if we railed against them loud enough and said, we want term limits, we'd have a lot less corruption in this country. Guys, I hope you got something out of this. I hope to see you at the Silver Symposium. We've got, what, 265 people from Ninja Nation showing up. Cannot wait to get in a room with that kind of energy and let you guys meet each other and, and get to know what it's like to be around good-hearted human beings that are excited for what's coming and are prepared and not scared. All right, guys, that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.